ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಐ ಸಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪಾಡ್ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಲೋರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಮೆಮರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಯುನೀಕ್ ಬ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಕಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಮೆಮರೇಬಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಇಸ್ ಪೆಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಮೆಮರೀಸ್ ಒನ್ ಸಚ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ which so many bangaloreans remember with unfaltering fondness and affection is mr shanbag the gentle bibliophile who created a warm and welcoming space synonymous with his personality in premier bookshop premier is remembered with great affection as a bangalore institution by people of several generations the impact that the bookshop and the person running it have had is reflected in the outpouring of grief and tributes across channels from across the world when news of Mr. Shanbagh's passing broke on 5th of May 2021. In this episode of BIC Talks, a few Bangaloreans remember and pay tribute to Mr. T.S. Shanbagh. Ramachandra Guha, historian and author. Hi, I am Ramachandra Guha and I am here to speak about the wonderful bookseller T.S. Shanbagh who died recently of COVID-related complications. He was an extraordinary man who contributed to the cultural and intellectual life of Bangalore for almost four decades. From the time he began his store on the corner of Church Street in 1971 till he retired from the business in 2009 and hundreds of people have the most warm and affectionate, mem- affectionate memories of how Mr. Shanbagh shaped their literary and intellectual education and there was a vast outpouring of tributes on social media after he died. Now, I had a very close and special relationship with Mr. Shanbagh. I went to the store for 30 years. I was taken there by my wife, Sujata Keshavan, who was then my girlfriend, who had an even longer association with Shanbagh because she was a resident of Bangalore and had grown up with the store to which her mother took her when she was a little girl. Uh, now, I'd like to read some paragraphs of an essay I wrote on Shanbagh, which is in my book, Patriots and Partisans. And the essay is called Turning Crimson at Premier. So I'll read a few paragraphs about my relationship with Shanbagh over a 30 year period. And then I may offer a few thoughts in conclusion. So here goes. I first began to patronize Premier in the 1970s. At a time when, unknown to me, the lady who is now my wife began to patronize it as well. My first clear memory of the bookshop is of a day in January 1980, when my wife, then my girlfriend, took me there to buy a parting gift. I was off to begin a PhD in Calcutta and she was due to rejoin her design school in Ahmedabad. At my request, she bought me a copy of Isaiah Berlin's biography of Karl Marx. Somewhere before or after buying the book, she gave me a gentle peck on the cheek. By the standards of Bangalore today, that gesture was utterly timid. However, by the social norms then prevailing, it was outrageously provocative. Unfortunately, she was caught in the act by the bookshop's owner, who turned a deep shade of red in consequence. So that's my early encounters with Mr. Shanbagh. And then I go on to describe how I patronized the store for several decades later. Now, I'm now going to read you uh, a couple of paragraphs on the crazy layout of the store. Among Premier's attractions were the wild eccentricities of its layout. The shop extended over a single room this 25 feet long and 15 feet wide. In the center was a mountain of books, seven or eight layers deep, these representing the sediment of knowledge discarded or scorned by Bangaloreans down the years. The last layer of the mound, the only one that was visible, showcased modern classics. Ben Green, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, P.G. Woodhouse and the like. One had to walk around the hill to view the other books on display set in piles against the walls of the shop. As one entered, one saw, first of all, the new hardbacks, these carefully chosen, works of history and biography that Mr. Shanbagh felt would attract the more elevated amongst his readers. 
Then one began a ritual circumambulation of the mountain. The wall to the left featured, as one went along, first fiction, then sociology and political science, then history and economics and ecology. Now it was time to walk around the mound to consult on the other wall, children's books, then books on nature, then works of spirituality and of science. And last of all, paperbacks on current affairs and military history. The crowd of customers and the cramped quarters were redeemed by the character of the man in charge. Once I went to buy some books for a friend in America who wanted to acquaint himself long distance with modern Indian history. I ordered Sunil Khinlani's The Idea of India and a volume of subaltern studies. Assessing the train of my thought, Mr. Shanbagh then pulled out a breezy book on India by a not unknown Indian. Not that, I said, I am waiting, looking for serious stuff. Wait a minute, said Mr. Shanbagh. We don't want any more fights in the Hindu. Titters of laughter broke out from the women and men in the shop who had caught the put down, which referred to a bloody polemic which I had then just started in the pages of the Hindu newspaper. Now it was my turn to turn crimson at Premier. So for 30 years, from 1979 to 2009, I visited Mr. Shanbagh's shop. I bought a whole range of books from there. I forged friendships there. I met people there. I bought a bag of books and went to the other greatly loved uh, uh, you know, landmark of Central Bangalore Koshi's Parades Cafe. In 2009, Mr. Shanbagh retired. And the extraordinary thing about his retirement was how well he took it. He decided, I have done enough. For 40 years, I have served, I have, I have conducted myself with dignity and honor and self-respect and other truthfulness. Now I'll sit at home, I'll be with my friends and I will be with my family and I'll enjoy life as it is. And his retirement was in such extraordinary contrast to other powerful people and successful people. You know, our entrepreneurs, our film stars, our cricketers, uh, uh, our politicians don't know when to retire. So for me, he was a model human being too. He had an inner you know, strength, an inner core of character that was reflected in the scrupulous honesty and integrity with which he conducted his business. And of course, in the way he lived life as a whole. He was a jewel of Bangalore and it was truly a privilege to have known him. Kirsana Kumar, theatre and filmmaker, farmer and educator. Dear Mr. Shanbagh, this is in this year, in this last year of making so many tributes and speaking for about so many people, this is the one tribute I really hoped never to make. Very selfishly, actually, we just, I hope that you somehow would be around forever so that we would feel that the Bangalore we knew and loved still was around us. Anyway, I was talking to my brother. So my brother and I basically, we've been coming to premier bookshops since the 70s. In fact, my brother just found a book. It was Reinhold Mesner's The Everest Expedition, I think it was called, something like this. That he, he had a gift certificate, a prize certificate from Bishop Cottons, and he went over to premier to bookshop to get it. And the evidence of this was 1978, but we were going there perhaps for a, so, you know, from the time we were children, 10 and 12 years old, we've been going to Premier Bookshop. Um, also, really strangely, my brother again remembered that on the de day that we heard of a very dear cousin's passing, the two of us small school children, we were in Premier Bookshop. And fortuitously, I happened to fall in love around St. Mark's Road. So then I lived near premier bookshop for the next 25 or 30 years and Mr. Shanbagh you were just our everything because you were the pillar at St. Mark's Road that made everything wonderful we came by to browse we knew where books were you know when people say that in premier bookshop it's such a disheveled book store I actually think it was a hyper organized book bookstore with the intention of making you walk in and understand that there was something to life that was beyond so-called alleged order whatever that may be something that was anarchic and poetic and something of nature that made you fall in love with books. We knew, we knew to turn left for the Indian literature. We knew to walk straight in very, very, when our daughter was born, we suddenly discovered, we had no idea about this before, but we knew that if you walk deep into the darkest recesses, there were the children's books. We knew to buy for my brother-in-law bestsellers, which were on the right-hand side wall as soon as you walked in. 
and how well you knew us, Mr. Shanbagh. You knew my father, you knew my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, you knew Kunarik and me, and then you knew Zui. How well you knew the books we wanted or we were looking for. How sweetly you handed us the books. You went hunting for them and handed us the books. And, and, and those discounts, you know, I don't even know what to say about the discounts. I honestly think you just randomly scribbled off a percentage for every single human being who walked into your store. And we all felt so privileged because we got a, a discount from Mr. Shanbagh. When I'm sitting here next to all these books, Gratowski's Empty Room, then Performing Utopia, newer ones, I feel like this is a book I would have bought from you, Mr. Shanbagh. Farid Zakaria's 10 Lessons for a Post-Pandemic World. And I don't know, I don't know, Mr. Shanbagh, how to thank you enough. I hope your family really feels the gratitude of a city because you really made Bangalore perfect for us. You made it wonderful. You made it, you made, you made it a book land. More than that, what happened when children walked into your bookstore, we were really um, instantly aware that life was not how the adults were telling us. We said, we realize, oh yeah, hell, everything that they're telling us about school, stay in school, get some knowledge, all rubbish. Here is this bookshop where words are just tumbling together, ideas, um, aspirations, dreams, we're all floating around and they were there for us to dip into. And we understood then, we, we saw something larger. So for this, I'm eternally grateful, Mr. Shanbagh. I'm also really grateful on behalf of everyone in our family who just walked by, browsed. We would go to the ham shop, we would pick up sausages, then we would come by to Premier Bookshop, just hang around, buy, buy sometimes just a magazine or the newspaper, go inside, read, maybe buy a book, but not always. Though I have to say the piles of books in our home and now on the farm are really all from you, Mr. Shanbagh. So this is your family more than anything so that they I have no doubt they know the impact you made on all of us but just for them to know how personal this impact was and today when my daughter writes or in fact the book that I'm writing that really Mr. Shanbagh I feel so happy to be dedicating to you this book about Bangalore I really feel happy and I feel that all the ways in which you guided me towards books the presence I got as books the presence I made that were books Whatever I write today is really thanks to you, Mr. Shanbagh. So, great going, Mr. Shanbagh. I'm not going to say rest in peace. I don't know. Raging on, Mr. Shanbagh. Thank you. Vivek Shanbagh, writer, novelist, and playwright. There are so many uh, memories of uh, Premier Bookshop and Shanbagh. But let me just state two, two things. The experience of uh, being in that bookshop was so unique. Many of you would have experienced this, people who have visited the bookshop, that one had to walk you know, sideways in some places in, in, in that bookshop because there were books piled up on all sides. And some of my friends uh, would complain that it is, it's in a mess. But I never felt so. I felt that it was by design. And the reason I'm saying this is, I felt that, uh, you know, there was, uh, uh, I felt very humble because I felt the weight of the knowledge, the enormity of the knowledge that is uh, captured in these books, uh, one could feel when one is inside the uh, premiere. And that was, uh, maybe it was his intention or not, or not I don't know, but I, I always felt good about it, good about having books all around and there were uh, it was not really a mess because uh, Shanbag knew every book uh, that he had in his, his bookshop. The other unique thing about this bookshop is uh, Shanbag's memory. And it did do two things. One is it made me feel that the bookshop, the books in the bookshop were all in some way connected. Because if you ask him for a book, if he had that book, he would uh, you know, tell you some four other books which were uh, related either by the same author or publication or same subject or, you know, whatever. Even if he doesn't have the book, he would still recommend three or four more books. So it made me feel that the books in his bookshop are in some way connected. And I'm saying this because if you are a book lover and if you are building a library, you would, you would know uh, this feeling, you would know what I'm, what I'm saying. That you feel that the books in the library, books in your collection, in some way they are connected. And you would go 
uh, where you get the same feeling, where you know that you will find something that you are looking for. So this made me go back to the uh, bookshop uh, again and again. And I was talking about memory of uh, Shan Bagh. The other thing uh, that he did is to his customers, not just me, but to his every customer, he remembered what uh, we liked and even disliked. And if we are looking for something and it was not there, and if I uh, visit him uh, the next time, maybe after 15 days or a month, he will remember it, he would remember it and uh, take out that book or say that, look, it has not yet come, I have ordered. So this is a, this is a great feeling because you know that you are going back to a place where the bookshop uh, uh, owner is uh, caring. He, he remembers your choice and you are sure that, you know, something uh, you will find in every visit. So I am grateful to Shanbag for all the service that he has done to the book lovers of uh, Bangalore. Thank you. Urmila Shetty, Professor of English, retired from St. Agnes College, Mangaluru. A hint from Dr. U. R. Anantamurthy, my guru and guide, led me to Premier Bookshop and to meet the unassuming and self-contained Mr. Shanbagh. It was a voyage of discovery on both counts. Let me into a library, and a wilder me emerges. One who adventures, forgetting what she came there for in the first place. Premier was better than any library. My discovery was, to borrow a phrase, the intellectual wallpaper in his shop. The books ran untidily from floor to ceiling. And yet he was always able to locate the book you wanted. Give it to you or get it for you. Along with my wish list, usually pertaining to V.S. Naipaul, I came away with books about philosophy, education, humor, new publications, and of course, books for my children. I felt as good as if I'd struck gold in this Aladdin's cave. I don't think he read the books as such. But in the whole process of browsing, stalking and retailing, he seemed to have absorbed them into himself. Premier Bookshop was consecrated to books. It reeked of reverence for the human mind and the immortality of the human spirit. It was a gateway to other worlds of consciousness. Mr. Shanbag, of course, was a curator, gatekeeper and guardian. And he actually gave you a discount for visiting the sanctuary. His passing, like his bookshop, which he closed in 2009, should not be a cause for mourning but a celebration for his having lived, for having touched our lives and created such a sacred space. I hope that his soul too rests in a sacred space, uplifted by the joy he gave to so many over the years. He and his shop are unforgettable. And of course, the feeling of great loss is inescapable. Sanjeev Jain, Professor of Psychiatry, Nimhans, Bangalore. The MG Road in the 1980s was bookended by two magnificent bookshops, the Premier and Select, and between them, they opened up infinite avenues that a walk on MG Road could lead to. Mr. Shanbagh sitting in the corner of Premier with his bemused smile watching as our gaze stopped at the base of an immense star of books, noting our clumsy attempts, and then finally extracting it with dexterity and efficiency, knowing exactly how many paperbacks could be balanced between his extended arms, the epitome of a lifetime 
of books handled with love and always with a look of shared joy every single time the books were always in a vaguely approximate order nearly chaotic but never quite with science fiction and politics and translations of european authors and a cartoon shakespeare often in adjacent towers even in the small spaces there were undisturbed corners where the books were in the same place for years till one finally bought a few more out of curiosity as to what these unloved books were about and that set off uh, down another path but that is another story premier bookshop mr shanbag wonderful memories and a bangalore which has sadly never been replaced asma editor of salar english daily shared the following on one of her social media pages in remembrance of mr shanbag every girl needs a bookshop situated in the heart of the city the kind where books are piled up from the floor to the ceiling where you can go in at the slightest excuse whether you have money in your wallet or not where you can browse at your leisure turn the pages and begin to read a book which you know you will never be able to afford and you read till you have to get back to wherever you have to go and then you will secretly tuck away your book in the huge piles of books and hope that no one will buy it before you are able to make another trip so that you can continue reading while pretending to browse and you will come back the next day or the next week or a few weeks later and hold your breath and walk towards the hiding place while wondering if someone bought the book or worse if another broke book lover has found the book and read it and hidden it believe me they are the worst kind i know you look at the spot where you had tucked away the book for a moment you think it is not there oh my god a half read book this is your worst nightmare coming true and then you suddenly spot it peeking from under the pile of books you catch your breath you pick it up you lovingly run your fingers along the cover as you would on the face of a forbidden lover and you stealthily look over your shoulder to see if the bookshop owner is watching you have been caught reading a book without paying you panic for a moment and then you realize that mr shanbag has turned away with a smile on his face he knows a poor book lover when he sees one and he has seen quite a few of them all hovering around the bookshop at lunch hour reading books that they can barely afford oh yes every girl needs a bookshop every girl needs premier bookshop achal prabala writer researcher and activist i live in bangalore my parents moved here in 1974 2 years old at the time and i believe i have been going to premier bookshop since i was 2 my parents actually knew mr shanbag when he worked for his uncle the other mr shanbag at a strand bookstore in bombay where they used to live they moved here at exactly the same time he moved here and so it was a perfect continuation of a, an old relationship my mother's family had been shopping at strand for a few generations and my parents continued the tradition with our mr shanbag I remember first going to his shop when I was probably 4 or 5 and I have distinct memories of it because my father worked at a public sector company my mother uh, used to be a graphic artist and then stopped working when my sister was born we did not have that much money uh, my father is an honest government servant and so we were uh, constrained uh, my appetite for books was constrained by what my parents could afford to buy me Uh, Mr. Shanbag recognized that my parents were friends of his, and as he would with any of his customers, he allowed me to read books without paying for them. And so I used Premier Bookshop as first as a reading library. I would be allowed to go and settle into a quiet, cool corner of this cavernous, dusty bookshop, which was so large at that time to me because I was so young. And I remember going into a little corner right at the back where the children's books were kept. 
Um, I'd read every single thing that he had and it was unbelievably exciting. It was like going into Alibaba's cave of treasures or something. I was young and it was magical. I mean, there was just nothing, nothing that was better in the world at that time than going there and choosing any book that I wanted to and read it, reading it uh, under the condition that I didn't spoil it because of course he did have to sell it on eventually to a paying customer. Any money that I had, any money that I got uh, in birthday presents or in other presents, all of that money went to Premier Bookshop. I don't think I spent money anywhere else. I was disinterested in toys and I think that, uh, not sure how or why actually, because I, I rather like toys now having children of my own, but at the time, I only ever wanted to read more books. And Mr. Shanbag over the years then became a kind of surrogate parent, I suppose. My school was not far from there. And if my parents were late coming to pick me up or if I missed my bus, I'd go down to Premier Bookshop and drop my bag down and with you know ink-stained hands and loosen my tie and settle into a quiet corner and read. If I ran out of money when I was close by, I'd go to Mr. Shanpag and borrow money from him and he'd just give it to me without uh, asking and always with a smile. When my parents needed coffee, uh, he would actually buy it from the coffee board outlet opposite his bookshop and keep it with him. And so Mr. Shanpag was just, it was an, he was an extension of my life, my parents' lives. He, he was like the furniture. He was like, uh, you know, another sibling or a family member of some kind. This relationship continued until my 20s. And it's kind of unbelievable. I was 17. I was trying to study outside this country. I needed a scholarship to do that. I needed to write exams in order to get those scholarships. And those books were terribly expensive because they all came from the United States. And my father was still working as an honest government servant at a company which paid him not enough for me to buy those books. And so Mr. Shanbag allowed me to copy down addresses of colleges in those books. And I did get that scholarship and I did go. But I studied and found out where I should apply because he allowed me to do that from the books in Premier Bookshop. He was such a decent, generous, kind, good man, a constant in my life for so many years that when he shut the bookshop down, I wrote a piece in Time Out in Bangalore, which uh, I cried while writing and I cried when the bookshop finally shut because I simply couldn't imagine what existence looked like without it. When I started earning, I funneled every little bit of money I had into his bookshop. I'd buy books that I didn't need. I would buy book sets, you know, for whole ranges of people because I, I simply wanted to funnel money towards him and keep that bookshop alive. It's not like I had much money, but any money I had uh, did actually go to him. And I don't regret a, a single, single, single thing about trying to support and help his enterprise grow. He remained the same unflappable, thoroughly decent, good, kind gentleman, right up to the moment that he closed his bookshop and he closed it by choice. He wanted a quieter life. The commute to his home in Rajaji Nagar, which he used to make every day for lunch, as well as of course to come and go, was just getting too much. Bangalore's traffic had increased. It wasn't pleasant any longer. He had a daughter he wanted to spend time with. He had grandchildren, a lovely wife, a lovely family. And it was a nice way to end. Even though I cried, I supported him. When he died, I was devastated. Uh, uh, my friend Ram called me yesterday. We cried together for hours on <laughs> recollections of him. But I feel so grateful, not just to have known him and to have lived in the same city and space with him, but to have also, I think, like certainly with my case or my parents and Ram's, we, we told him we loved him. You know, he knew we loved him. And I, I feel really grateful about that because I think that I have no regrets about that relationship with him. We tried to see him as much as we could. I did. Um, I cherish every single moment with him. I think he knew that. I was able to tell him that I feel like the luckiest person alive to have spent over 20 years with a man <laughs> and his bookshop, which I will treasure you know, to the last day of my life. Um, it was that profound. Mahesh Bhatt, photographer and filmmaker. It was a ritual for many to go to Koshi's and to the magazine store next door and then to Premier Bookstore. I have done that many a times. An important point to note is that the closure of Premier Bookstore, I think, marked the beginning of the end of owner-run bookstores and where the owner was knowledgeable about books, loved his customers, uh, etc. So, of course, I mean, uh, there are 
several bookshops now, you know, there are owner-run bookstores, but I think it marked the end of a culture, you know, of, of book reading. Rahul Rao, author and senior lecturer in politics at SOAS University of London. Hello, um, I'm Rahul Rao. I grew up in Bangalore and I'm currently based in London where I work at the School of Oriental and African Studies. I'm a lecturer on politics in SOAS. I was very sad to hear about the death of Mr. Shanbagh, especially because I was a regular at Premier Bookshop all the time that I lived in Bangalore from the time I was born till, uh, till I was about 23. I grew up on Museum Road, a few doors down from the shop. So I was a frequent uh, visitor to Premier Bookshop. And in fact, I can almost chronicle my own growing up based on the spaces in the shop that I occupied as, as a reader and a buyer of books. So at the beginning, I suppose I spent most of my time at the back of the shop where I think the children's books were kept. And then as I grew up, I think I may have graduated to other spaces in the shop. The literature and the fiction was, of course, all over the place, but also later in life, the history, politics, memoir, biographies, which were closer towards the front. In my memory, there are still spaces of the shop that I don't know very much about. I think the, the back of the shop on the left, if, you, if your back was towards the entrance, I have no idea what was in that corner. It's not, it's not a space that I inhabited very much. But I have very vivid memories of things I found and read um, in, in other parts of the shop. Because we lived on Museum Road for many years, I would say multiple generations of my family have a relationship with the shop and with Mr. Schoenberg. I think some of us may even have used it as a kind of library. We spent hours reading things. Sometimes we bought, sometimes we didn't, and Mr. Schoenberg never seemed to mind. I think there used to be one stool somewhere at the back where you could, if you were lucky and if it was unoccupied, you could sit there even though there was so little space, of course, as everyone knows and remembers. We were always given discounts. And for a long time, I thought I was special because of these discounts. They were often different. Sometimes they were 20%, sometimes they were a bit less, sometimes they were more, sometimes they were odd numbers. It was only when um, Mr. Shanbagh retired and all these articles started appearing in the press about Premier Bookshop and what a major role it played in the intellectual life of Bangalore, that I realized that everybody had been getting these discounts. And then I began to wonder, you know, what was the financial model? How did this place run on this kind of generosity? But it's one of the things about the shop and about my experience there and the way Mr. Shanbagh treated us as readers and buyers that I'll never forget. I'm sure everybody remembers Premier as being small and crowded with the books all over the place, stacked up vertically. Um, there was almost always books were falling down somewhere or the other when a customer, you know, pulled something out of a pile. This is something I dared never to do. I always asked Mr. Shanbak to take the books out because I was so worried about these piles coming down. But the amazing thing was he always knew where a book was and he always knew what you might like based on what you bought before or the conversations you had with him before. You also often met people in the shop that you knew. And even though the two aisles were quite narrow, there was always somehow space for one more person and of course for more books. And that was, um, I think, one of the most amazing things about the shop. I often wondered about the contrast between Premier and Gangaram's just around the corner. And, you know, I think there's space in a city for countless bookshops and all of them do different things. but. For my, for my child's mind, a bookshop had to be crowded, like Premier. It couldn't be, Gangarams was somehow too spaced out. It was too much like a showroom for me to think of it as, as a bookshop in the way that Premier was. Today, I'm a writer, among other things, but I think writers always start as readers. And I started as a reader in Premier Bookshop. And for me, it's, it's the beginning of my own intellectual journey as a reader and a writer. Zui Kumar Reddy, writer, editor, musician and farmer. Mr. Shanbagh, 
I just want to first of all apologize for not waiting that extra five minutes to buy my last Harry Potter book at premium. I have no words for how sorry I am. I'd asked you the day before what time you will be opening the shop and I was all set to get it at premium like I had done all my other Harry Potter books till then. But Higginbotham's had opened five minutes earlier and I couldn't help myself and ran across and ended up getting it there. But I never felt good about it, especially not when I was walking back and saw you in your white shirt and pants rolling up that roll top shutter outside your shop. I remember it was a rainy morning, maybe April, making it all the more depressing. My dad tells me now that I was so upset that we actually did buy a second copy at premium just to have had it from you. But I think by then we all knew the moment had passed and it was just a big cover up. But that was a sad day for me and I have felt sorry about it ever since. I think the idea of Harry Potter growing up, me too, and in that sense saying goodbye to the children's book section at the back right hand corner of your shop and in a sense to you, I remember feeling like I was leaving home, graduating high school, making a big change in my life. When I think about it now, I don't know if it had anything to do with Higginbotham's at all. But I was preparing to say goodbye to that magical part of being a child that you had so much been a part of. Growing up in St. Mark's Road was like a fairy tale. Everything was extra special and everything in that 300 foot radius around our home felt like an extension of our home. And because the annual highlights of my relationship with Premier and with you, Mr. Shanbag, with this bout of spells and magic and owls and chocolate frogs, you became an extension of that world as well. There was magic there in the children's section at the back of the right aisle. Magic in you pulling out the ladder to help me find exactly what I wanted. Magic in the seemingly eternal layout of books. The walls were made of books. There seemed to be lofts where the floors were made of books. I remember there was a little gap in the middle wall of books from which you could cross from aisle to aisle and this felt like a secret tunnel from one world to another. But ultimately there was magic in you, Mr. Shanbag, in your kind face, in your absolute grace, in the fact that you knew every one of your customers so well and in the fact that you ran this bookstore, a pillar of so much that has been and so much to come. And in the fact that you silently bore witness to so many of our lives, our journeys, our growth. A few years after I bought my last Harry Potter, I came into Premier to buy a copy of Haruki Murakami's Dance, 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 <laughs> quote unquote, growth. And yet I didn't know much about you. And I'm sorry about that too. I suppose that is what happens when one assumes so much of the world is an extension of your own home. You rest easy in the fact that it will all stay close. But then I heard that Premier was closing and that you were moving to Australia. And it was heartbreaking, but it was okay. The city was changing. We would soon be moving too. And I suppose we remind ourselves constantly that change is the only constant. Change is inevitable. But why change what is already magic? When we left our house on St. Mark's Road, we painted the walls with the names of everyone who'd ever been in it or been a part of it. And of course, Mr. Shanberg, your name was there, as were all of the books. Thank you for hanging in there and listening to the full conversation. If you liked what you heard, do share it with friends and family. You can also leave us a review or rating on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. The crew behind this podcast is Gaurav Krishna on sound supervision and production with support from S. Saranaraj and Raku Tenkaila. Episode artwork and design is by Chandni Venkataraman. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel on your favorite podcast platform. It can also be accessed on our website, bangaloreinternationalcenter.org. This is Lekha Naidu, signing off on behalf of everyone at BIC.